Hi, so today I'm going to demonstrate quite a few different techniques when working with tables. There are a few different sections that will allow you to simply scroll through to find the information that you need and I'll put those timers on the screen. I'll also type the text in bright red so as you scroll through the video you should see the red text flash up to each section that you require. So here we have the layout of the video. Section 1, which is all about just inserting a table and the very basics behind doing that, that will be to follow. Section 2 is how to format your text alignment in, within your table. Section 3, borders and shading. Section 4, merging and splitting cells. And section 5, changing the alignment of columns, rows and tables. Section 1, inserting a table. So in this section, I'm going to show you how to insert a table into your Word document. So I've just got a plain document here and just some demonstration text. And I want to insert a table in this section here. So I'm gonna put my cursor here and I'm gonna go up to the tab insert and to this icon here, which says table. If I click this drop down. I'm presented with a number of different options. So the first option, if you know how many cells and rows you want to have in your table, you simply click and drag until you have your ideal selection. Alternatively, if you go to the insert tab and click the drop down arrow, you can go down to this icon here saying insert table. And this just gives you the option of selecting the number of rows and columns that you wish to have just put five in and then just click OK. Now initially the table will sit directly below your text so if you want the gap just simply put the cursor next to the end of the last word and click the return key. So the first thing you might want to do is to put a simple heading inside this table and the best way to do this is sometimes to highlight a row, go up to layout and then go down to this icon here that says Merge Cells. That will turn all of your cells that were there into one main cell at the top. And in this cell, you can simply write your title. And again, in the same way that you would format a normal Word document, you can simply use the Home tab and all the usual icons to centre, increase your you highlight your text and then increase the font size until you're happy. If you wish to move the table you simply click the cross in the top left corner and then you can click and drag and move your table around your document. Section 2 formatting text and alignment. In this section I'm going to show you how to format your text once it's in your table. Now, if you click on your table, you'll see table design and table layout appear at the top here. If you click on layout, this is where you'll see a number of different icons that all relate to the way that your words and your cells behave. If I highlight all of my cells, I can use these tabs here to select where my text will lie within my cell. If I cl click on the center, icon here, it will centre all of my text, even if I increase the size of my cell. If I go up to the height tab here and click on the up arrow, my cells will increase in size. Once the height of my columns are OK, you can see that my text remains in the centre of the cell and that's because we use this icon here. If you wanted to adjust it, you just simply click on the icon of your choice and it will simply move your text around the cell accordingly. If you want to adjust the size or font of your text, simply highlight the text you want to change, go to the Home tab, and then you've got all the different variants with the font, and then you can increase and decrease the size and again, you can use these icons here to adjust your alignment, left, centre and right. And again, you can use these icons here to adjust the alignment 
left, centre or right. You can of course just simply affect one cell. So if you just wanted to adjust this section here or the information in this cell, you can just click on that cell and you can just move the text in that cell. Section three, borders and shading. In this section, I'm going to show you how to deal with borders, the size of your borders and shading. So once again, if you click on your table, you have these two tabs at the top here. If you go to table design, you'll see you have a number of options here. This particular icon refers to all the different borders around the outside and the cell borders of your table. So if we decided we wanted to increase the size of the borders of our table, we'd need to use this icon here. But before we do that, we need to select our choice. So this icon here refers to the border styles in terms of the color and to the style and to the width. So for example, if we chose this border style here, which is quite thick, just for demonstration purposes, and then we go along here and we can choose a color of our choice. So let's go for something red and bold. And then what we need to do is to ensure if we're going to affect all of the lines in our table, we need to tell Word to select all of those lines by selecting the entire table. And if we go up to our borders and click on the drop down and click all borders, you can see now that all of our borders have turned red with a nice thick line. If you simply want to adjust the color of your cells, for example, if we wanted to affect just this row here, we can use this icon here called shading. And if I click the drop down, again, you'll be given all the different color options. If the color of your choice isn't there, then if you click more colors, then the color wheel will appear. So I'm just gonna click a simple gray, and there you have those cells colored. If you decide your font color isn't suitable, then you can highlight the cells again, go to the Home tab, click on this icon here, which refers to your font color, and click on the color of your choice. Section four, merging and splitting cells. So if I wanted to combine these two cells here, I simply highlight the two cells, go up to table design, go up to table layout and click merge cells. Now, if you want to match the rest of the cells and place this text in the center, then just simply press the delete key and then your text will come down to one line, one single line and will match the rest of your table. Now, if I decided I wanted to split this cell into three different columns, then ensure the, the cursor's in the cell, go to layout and click on this icon that says split cells. This will give you the option of splitting the cell both in terms of the columns and the rows. But if I just wanted to remain as one row, but I want to split it into three columns, click three here, and click OK, and there you have three columns in one cell. Section five, changing column, row, and table alignment. And that's generally using this little cursor icon here, which is two vertical lines and arrows. So first of all, if I decided that I wanted to make this batch of cells here slightly smaller, if I click on the line here and drag, you can see I can move and reduce the size of my row. But what it has done, it's stretched out this column here and it's not the same size as these columns here. So if I wanted to equal the width of all of these columns to make them equal, if I simply highlight just these columns, make sure I'm on layout here, and then I'm going to click on this distribute columns and that will equalize the width of each of your column. 
in the same way as if I wanted to reduce the height of my rows, if I click on the bottom one and pull it up and then decide the remaining cells should be the same, highlight those cells, click on layout and then if you click on the distribute rows icon here, then all your rows will be equal. If you wanted to reduce the width of your entire table, you can click and drag on the far right or far left of your table and simply move it across. Don't worry about this bit here, we'll format all this so that it does equal itself out. So at the moment that's probably as far as I can go without readjusting the width of all of these columns. So again, if I just simply highlight my columns, go to layout and click distribute columns, they will equalize. And then again, I can use my cursor to simply drag across until I'm happy. Now, as you can see, the text has begun to wrap itself around my table. So if we pop the cursor into the table and right click, you can go down to this section called Table Properties. And in here, you're given quite a number of different options that are extremely useful. In here, you'll see that you've got different alignment options. So if you wanted your table to go in the center of your document, you could click center and click OK. Alternatively, if you simply wanted the text to go at the bottom or the top of your table in the same way it was before, then you can just simply click on none and then click OK and your text will only appear at the bottom or the top of your table. If you go to table properties once again, then you can realign your table by popping it into the center of your document and clicking OK. And this way you don't have to have a table that stretches the complete width of your document. So I hope all those hints and tips have helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.